There were mosquitoes introduced into four countries. These mosquitoes were engineered to create sterile offspring, sterile male offspring. So when the male breeded with the female, they would create offspring that wouldn't survive. And they were supposed to release only the males, and it was supposed to drive down the population of the particular mosquito that carried dengue and Zika. And it was released in Brazil by the, million, by the billions, in Cayman Islands, in Panama, I believe in Malaysia, and it was, it, it, they intended to release it in the Florida Keys and in Texas. Now, I was in the Florida Keys testifying at the Mosquito Control Board, and I mentioned to the Oxitec scientist that when you genetically engineer, you change the structure and the, the safety profile, and they, had they ever tested to see if the saliva of the mosquito, which was certainly going to bite some humans, was dangerous. And he said, well, we're in the middle of an experiment right now to see if the protein that's expressed by the inserted gene is expressed in the saliva. And my thinking is, it's a little late, guy. You've already released millions or hundreds of millions of mosquitoes, and they don't just release the males like they promised, they release millions of females that bite, and it could already have been doing problems. So I said to him, you know, when you genetically engineer, there's a lot of massive collateral damage that occurs. When you took a human gene and they put a gene in there, another uh, human cell, they put a gene in there, up to 5% of the functioning genes change their levels of expression, which could increase the allergens or toxins or carcinogens in the, in the saliva of the mosquito. Shouldn't you be testing the entire saliva for changes and not just the existence of a particular protein? And his response was brilliant. He said, good idea. And then I argued with him, saying, you know, what you're doing is criminal. I didn't use that term. Because you're releasing mosquitoes and you can change the gene pool of the mosquitoes forever. And he said, oh, that won't happen because these are self-limiting. They will die off. He knew that about 3%, according to his research, survive. But in the presence of tetracycline, it can be up to 18%. And we also know that it's a leaky technology and it doesn't always work. And I was explaining to him that he was completely naive and he was explaining to me that I was completely wrong and I was right, unfortunately. In Brazil, they tested the population of mosquitoes up to three years after the release. And they found between 10 and 60% of the samples contained genes from these genetically engineered mosquitoes. Which means that the mosquito gene pool is forever changed. One of the aspects of GMOs is that it becomes a permanent change in the gene pool, as you saw on the film. You can't recall the fish from the ocean or the mosquitoes from the air, and we have a changed gene pool for mosquitoes now. And we don't know if those mosquitoes are less likely to be controlled by insecticides or if they're more likely to carry Zika or Dengue or some other disease. So here was the scientist arguing with me the same scientists that only after millions were released decided to finally look for one change in the saliva, ignoring all the others and ignoring what nature does best, and that is to pass her bounty and survive.